Last week, Mohamed Fauzi left us a comment to take a peek into MMC. MMC Corp has been catching headlines. The latest news on the company lingers around the privatization by its major shareholder. But to talk about MMC, first, we need to talk about the man behind it. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show, Frankie Answers Questions. Today, we will talk about MMC Corp, its businesses, its boss, Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al Bukhari, the privatization, and what it is worth. Question 1. Who is Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar? I think there's no one better to answer this question other than our guest of the day. Let's put our hands together for him. Semua beras di Malaysia yang dijual, diimport dan diedarkan oleh syarikat Bernas. Siapa pemilik Bernas? Syarikat AIR. Central Sugar Refinery. Yes, Malaysia, Syarikat. Tauke Modenas. Bank Mohd Malat. Mak Tanah, Pelabuhan Johor, Pelabuhan Tanjung Pelepas, Pelabuhan Pulau Pinang, Jabat. Pus pemilik MMC Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al Bukhari. <laughs> kita dapat lihat macam negara kita tak ada usahawan lain yang mampu untuk bertanding dengan Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al Bukhari. Semuanya kena diswastakan kepada satu orang sahaja. Dan saya tak nak cakap banyak. Anyways, that was taken from his speech in 2012. As you can see, every time during general elections, the name of Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar will be brought out one way or another. I pun tak nak cakap banyak lah. By the way, we know that it can be quite confusing because he seems to own everything. So to make it easier to understand, these are the key flagship companies that hold most of his business operations. Question 2. What does MMC Corp do? The short answer is almost everything. From the morning you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you are contributing to MMC Corp. When you wake up in the morning, you turn on the lights. The power may come from Malakoff, the largest independent power producer in Malaysia. When you drink water, your water comes from the AIR. Then you cook your breakfast. The gas comes from Gas Malaysia. In the future, when you take a poo-poo in the toilet, your shit goes to the Langat Centralized Sewerage Treatment Plant. If you don't want to drive to work, you can take the MRT. But out of all these businesses, the crown jewel of MMC is the port businesses. It controls about half of the seaports in Peninsular Malaysia, namely Penang Port, Johor Port and Tanjung Pelepas Port. This business division contributes more than 70% of the total group revenue in FY20. Do you know that MMC is one of the top 10 port operators in the world? Okay lah, we are not just top 10 in COVID-19 infection rate, we also have the top 10 port operators in the world as well. Oh! Malaysia boleh. Question 3. What is MMC Corp worth? Since port operation contributes most of the revenue, let's categorize MMC Corp as a port operator. The easiest way to uncover the value is to look at its peers in the industry. Their closest peer would be West Ports. If you remember your geography, the Straits of Malacca is one of the busiest sea routes in the world. MMC owns a number of ports along the Straits, while West Port only owns one port here. With just one port, West Port is valued at 14 billion ringgit market cap. On the other hand, MMC Corp trades at just merely 5.1 billion. How is this possible? A small port operator like West Port could fetch almost five times in terms of market cap compared to MMC, which is is one of the top 10 largest seaport operators in the world. Even children could tell the math doesn't add up. Um, this is one and this is two. It's called math. By the way guys, I need your help. I want to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you enjoyed the show and you benefited from it, please help me to share this video to your friends by using the share button because YouTube will have this magical effect on my channel to show this video to even more people. Tolong, tolong ah. Terima kasih banyak banyak. Question 4. What contributes to the value of MMC? There are many factors, but let's run some numbers. In FY20, Westport raked in 1.97 billion ringgit revenue, while MMC made 3.2 billion. That's 50% more than Westport during the same period. At a glance, we can say that MMC has much better business because it made more revenue. However, 
if you drill further into the profit before tax, this is the interesting part. Westport, with 1.97 billion revenue, can generate a profit before tax of 865 million ringgit. On the contrary, MMC with 3.2 billion revenue only registered 610 million profit before tax. That's 30% lower compared to Westport. So how on earth a company with 50% more revenue makes 30% lower profit? Clearly, there is a huge problem with the way the company is run. Houston, we have a problem. This is just an income perspective. Now, let's take a look at their balance sheet. Just a quick comparison of the fixed assets between the two companies. As of FY20, Westport has 4.2 billion ringgit, while MMC has 21.9 billion. That's five times higher than Westport. So again, even a child can tell the number doesn't make sense here. Touché. If you were to judge the company based on financial numbers, you will never figure this out. Question five, why does MMC seem so cheap? One of the most famous sayings in the stock market is that sometimes stocks are cheap for a reason. Let's explore what are the possibilities that make MMC so cheap. First, based on the quick glance at their numbers, MMC is clearly not efficient compared to its peers. Perhaps that is the number one reason why it failed to garner confidence from investors. Secondly, remember our guest Tony Poir? That was taken from his political campaign speech. If you Google on the internet, you will find not just Tony Poir, but many other politicians will bring up Tan Sri Sai Mokta's name when the general election is near. Due to the political nature of his position and the many wow accusations of his relationship with politicians, <laughs> let the chat tell us the story. In 2018, Malaysia created history with a change of government. Immediately, MMC also had a change in share price. It seems like the valuation of the company fluctuates accordingly to the political party in power. I <laughs> don't Question 6. What are your thoughts on the privatization of MMC Corp. Recently, Syed Mokhtar issued a statement about his plan to privatize MMC Corp at 2 ringgit per share, which means he needs to fork out 2.9 billion ringgit to buy out the remaining shares that he does not own today. My thoughts? It's a damn good deal for himself. Think about it, you only have to pay 2.9 billion ringgit to fully own 21 billion ringgit worth of fixed assets. Don't understand? Let me explain. Imagine you and I co purchase a house at the price of 200,000 ringgit 10 years ago. Each of us own half of the house. 10 years later today, assume the house is worth 2 million ringgit. One day, I decided to buy over your equity in the house for 500,000 ringgit. What are your thoughts on the deal even if you have made 5 times the return over 10 years? Life is good but it can be better. Here are my thoughts on the privatization deal of MMC Corp. When it comes to privatization, one of the most important measurement is enterprise value because it tells you exactly how much a company is worth. If you don't know what it is, don't worry. I will put the definition down here. Anyways, based on the rough calculation on MMC, their EV is around 13 billion ringgit, which translates to roughly 430 per share. In other words, the company should be worth at least that much. But the offer from Syed Mokhtar stands at 2 ringgit per share. So, I think it's damn good deal for him. <laughs> Anyways, I've been thinking for a long time about what I would do with the company if I were in his position. First thing I would do after privatizing the company is to improve the efficiency. With better efficiency, I can possibly produce much better profit. Then, in a few years down the road, I can always lease the company again. Assuming with a better track record of results, my business will likely fetch much better valuation than before. This sounds like a good plan, right? Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, this idea not I think one, huh? I also learned from history in the stock market. Nah, the, the... Ayah. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.